If you're looking for ways to start or continue a garden journal and you're not quite sure what to include in your garden journal, then this video is for you. I'm Natalie Lucier of Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery and I'm a longtime journaler, gardener, and sometimes bullet journal nerd. So I am super excited to be talking today about the different ways that you can garden journal. When I first got into gardening, when we lived in Texas, I started off just with a very simple blank journal. And what I did is I would just note down everything that I did during the day and any yields or harvests that we had. And this is when I first got the permaculture bug and it worked really well. You know, I got to see kind of over time the progress and I could look back to a couple months ago how things were growing and it was kind of fun to just see that progress. But I've learned a lot about gardening and journaling since then and I'll be sharing with you some awesome some garden ideas for your journal. I'm also going to show you Lee Valley's A Gardener's Journal. So this is a premium product. It's about $50 Canadian, and I don't think it's even available outside of Canada. So this is definitely not a promo for this journal, but I just wanted to show it as an inspiration to give you ideas of what to journal for your garden. And there's just some really cool spreads and layouts in this journal. So I thought it would be fun to leaf through it together. So there are a few pages that I really like and I think make a great amount of sense to add to any garden journal. So the first one is the perennial and tree list type of page. So here the way that they do it in this journal is they have perennial inventory for perennials, bulbs, and herbs. You have the date planted, the plant name, the quantity, and the location. Then you also have the flowering date and number of plants remaining in certain years. You can also put in some notes. So I love this. We put this down for our elderberries, our gumi berries, Saskatoon berries, so all of the things and when they got planted. And this is great because you can just add on year to year. And then the same goes for woody perennial inventories like trees, shrubs, and vines. So we've got our peach trees, our thornless honey locusts, our sweet cherry trees. And so I really like this setup and just being able to see also the flowering dates, the 10 year growth and produce records. So you can see how tall it got, how much you harvested. And that's just a really cool way to keep track of all the efforts that you're putting into your garden, especially if you're like me and you really enjoy doing a lot of perennials and planting a lot of trees and not just annuals. Another gardening journal idea that I love is the year at a glance or essentially plant timing for you. So here in, in this version here, they have a year at a glance and you can see you can have this out for multiple years because this whole journal is a 10 year planner, but you can really do this on a yearly basis and just kind of remind yourself of when you're supposed to be planting certain things, especially as you learn more in your gardening journey, you're gonna know, okay, yes, March was too early to plant that, or no, actually that worked out really well. So you can kind of copy that from year to year. And so, yeah, I love how you can actually fill this out and give yourself your own almanac or planner for when to plant things. The next idea that really elevates just the daily simple log of a gardening journal into next level amazing gardening feedback is a five year or 10 year daily log. And the way to do that in your journal is to split up a page and have some lines drawn where you'll have space for multiple years on one page. And initially when I first heard of this concept, I was like, why would this be useful? But since this is the second year I'm going through this particular garden journal planner, I can actually see year to year what's changed, what I was doing this time last year and what I'm doing now. I can also track, you know, the weather and what's changing as well. So I really like this spread here. So in this particular journal, we have a page for every single day of the year, including winter. Um, so you may or may not do that in your personal journal. If you're doing this bullet journal style, you might just do it uh, for the days that you're really gardening. But at the same time, it's cool to just have something to note in the winter if you just bought your seeds and things like that. Um, so what I really like here is when we start getting to the place where I have two days in two years. So here, 2022, 2023, and you can see, you know, what I planted and what grew and kind of what I'm trying. I also started putting down the greenhouse temperatures versus the outdoor temperatures. And so it's really cool once you get to the point where you're going to be doing this gardening thing long term and you can start to see the results year after year what's different what's changing how you're learning and you know what what you're learning so you can do better each year the next thing you'll want to add to your garden journal is a map and this is essentially a layout of your garden and where you want to place things in your garden and i think this is kind of an intuitive thing to add to your garden but it's not necessarily easy to do so here i have my example of my garden layout and my greenhouse currently 
trees. So I have the sides, I have all the raised beds drawn out, and then I have, you know, what I'm planting in all the different areas. And then a quick tip to help you plan things out would be to have kind of a separate page or a separate page in your journal if you want, where you have all the things you want to plant. And then once you find a sp space for them, you can check it off. And I think that's the hardest part for me and for a lot of gardeners, I think, is that we want to plant so many different things and we may not have space for all of them or we might not know where we're gonna fit them all. So we start all these seeds or we buy these plants at the nursery and then we're like, oh, where are they all gonna go? So this kind of planning is super important. And you can also have, you know, lists that would be um, maybe in other places in your garden, maybe they're, you know, the front of your home, that kind of thing. And so you can also note down, you know, is this something that climbs? Is this something that needs uh, a longer period of time to grow? Do they need cover uh, against, you know, cabbage worms, for example, and things like that. So that will also influence where you put things in your garden and in your garden plan. And I highly recommend doing a garden layout in pencil so you can erase it and fix it because you will probably change your mind about what to plant, where to plant it, and all of that. So that's kind of what I have for my garden layout. I like how this journal has a new garden layout for every single year. So if you're doing rotational planting uh, and changing things around, or if you have perennials and you have annuals, that can also be really helpful. Now the final garden journal idea for you is to have a yields page. So this is where you log everything that you harvest. And I have to admit, I don't always do this because I'm in such a hurry. We're just kind of picking and eating and just going for it. But it's really cool to have a planting record and then also a harvest record. So you know what you planted, when you planted it, whether it was a seed or a transplant, uh, how many you planted, and then the date of the yields and any comments. So that way, if you're trying different varieties of different types of seeds or plants, you can kind of compare and and choose the ones you're gonna go with you know in future years and I really do like how this journal has you know these cool little uh, quotes and things about gardening and also you'll notice that on the individual pages they they have the Latin names for different plants so you're always learning about new varieties of plants that you may not have heard about before or tried before. Now I wanna hear from you. Do you have any gardening journal ideas or any spreads that you do either in a bullet journal or if you have any sort of purchase journals like this that you really love, then go ahead and leave a comment below. I am totally a notebook geek and a gardening geek, so I will definitely check out your suggestions and your recommendations. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more all about garden planning as well as garden journaling, then leave a comment about that too. Now go ahead and watch my next video, which is all about using wool in the garden. You might be surprised what the benefits are.